This is basically a story about real tutors. Royal tutors were basically talented and wise people recruited to guide princes in preparing for their succession to the throne. This is the king, a brilliant man who was called by the king to teach the four young princes. The king has five sons and one daughter. It could very well be the other way around. To prevent bad things from happening to his children, the king wanted Heine to train the four brothers because in the king's opinion, all four children were not ready for the throne. After a long journey, Heine finally arrived at the royal family's castle. But the soldiers stopped him because they thought he was a child. He took a letter introducing himself as a tutor, but they thought he was the tutor's son. The queen had to personally come and get him so he could enter. She apologized to Heine for the soldier's mistake, but he was used to being misunderstood, so it was okay. Heine felt honored by the fact that as a commoner he could enter the palace of the royal family. The queen thought that the fact that the king chose him proved that he was very talented because most of his previous tutors had left their jobs midway. While the queen said that her four children are very good, Heine was admiring the queen's love for her children, but no matter how the princes are, he will still instruct them strictly. Heine went in to meet the four princes and was impressed because they were so beautiful to the point of looking like they came out of a painting. The fourth prince, Leon Radio, approached to greet the queen. He appears to be an arrogant and vain young man who despises commoners. The fifth prince is the Licht who often displays a laid-back, childish personality, wandering the city and bringing home girls. The third prince is Bruno, who is the most serious of the brothers and the most studious, excelling in all academic aspects. But when Bruno learned that Heine had never attended school, he immediately began to dislike Heine. The second prince is Kai, who seems to be the quietest, however he looks at Heine in a scary way. After the greetings, Heine wanted to interview each prince to understand them better. He chooses the classes for them, but Radio Leon refuses because he doesn't like having a teacher. Bruno also said that he didn't need a tutor who had never attended a school. Heine now understood him because all the previous tutors had resigned, but Heine doesn't care and doesn't give up. After all, the king gave him this work, he will do it until the end. Of all, Leo insisted on denying Heine's lesson so that the king could send him away. Licht remembered that he had to receive guests at that time, so if Heine wanted to interview him, he would have to do it in his room in a few hours. Bruno also came out and told Heine to attend an interview in his office in an hour. Kai also wanted to say something, but he was overwhelmed and left. Only Leo remained. Heine called him for an interview. Our protagonist took a quick look at Leo's resume and knew he was humble, calm, and kind to everyone, but in reality he was just an arrogant prince. Our protagonist asked why Leo hates tutors so much. Leo says that tutors are as unpleasant as peppers because he hates peppers. But the main reason is that the tutors all always only care about the king's mood and never worry about him, and secondly he hates studying, every time he was forced to study he ran away, and no one can catch him because he is a runner with many awards. There was Heine about to give Leo a little test when Leo tried to run away. The main door was blocked, Leo ran through the window, but Leo accidentally dropped his diary, and Heine picked it up, he read it and discovered that Leo always thought negative things about himself. To get the diary back, Leo lied and said it belonged to Licht, however Heine will only return it to Leo if he agrees to take the test. With no options, Leo agreed and started taking the test, Heine discovered that Leo was too lazy to study, but when he got serious, he still tried to solve some questions. Meanwhile, Heine continued reading Leo's diary, and discovered that he also has a weak side, and that he saw Bruno as a mirror that he wants to be, and that all his arrogance requires to cover up his weakness. After that, Heine asked Leo to return to this room at the end of the day, so they could work on their studies. With that said, Heine left, and Leo was surprised that Heine was really gone. Suddenly, the employee came to give Leo a cake, and on it was a message saying thank you for your hard work. Heine went to meet the second prince, Bruno, who was considered a genius with great intellect. Bruno agreed to take Heine's test and completed it quickly, but he also wanted to challenge Heine to see if Heine had enough knowledge to teach him and was quickly defeated. But he refused to accept defeat, but continued to challenge Heine, this time in mental arithmetic. As a result, he continues to lose. Then he tried to win in the areas of music, card games, and finally a test that Bruno himself compiled. Heine not only finished the job in seconds, but also pointed out Bruno's mistakes. In response to this, Heine's son collapsed today it was already certain that he would not be able to defeat Heine. Heine saw Bruno's thesis and took a look. At that moment, he understood the effort that Bruno made here and gave very valuable advice. In the end, Bruno also accepted him as a teacher, and so, Heine realized that Bruno was just trying to find someone who he could consider a real teacher. At that moment, Licht ran in and saw that the interview was over. He took Heine away. Heine knew that Licht was extroverted and would often sneak out of the palace to go out and flirt with girls. Very sure he would do the same. He entered Licht's room and was soon greeted by the girls. They all like Heine because of his cute, childish face. And Heine likes to be misunderstood like that from time to time. Licht asked the three girls to leave the room for the moment so he could do the test. When it all started, we see that Licht seemed frustrated while taking the test and even asked the three girls for the answers. At that moment, Heine asked Licht to do it himself. He did so as he spoke. In just a moment, everything was ready. In the end, Licht really wanted to know who Heine was because the previous tutors were all famous or had some connection with the royal family. And out of nowhere, Licht removed his super serious expression to welcome a girl back 
into his room. While leaving, Heine informed him to attend the meeting in the afternoon, and Heine realized that Licht seemed like the kind of person he should be more careful with, because on the outside he seemed silly and playful, but he was someone who could do everything, while his opponent was off guard. Then, Heine went to meet Prince Kai, considering him dangerous because he had already been involved in a mess fighting at the military school. Heine remained cautious, an employee who said that Kai was outside, and that few people could speak to him, he only had an hour before his scheduled time. He quickly went to look for Kai, and arriving in the garden, he saw a real dog that took his book. Heine chased him, and ended up finding Kai sleeping. Kai woke up, took Heine's hand, and found it very soft. Kai treats Heine like a teacher, and says he often comes here to play with the dog. He saw that Kai was nothing like people said he was. Kai is just not good at communicating, and loves soft things, like even his silly mother. When Heine sent him the test, Kai also took the test obediently without any comments. Her younger sister, Adele, arrives and is introduced to the queen by Kai. Adele left, and Kai really liked Heine as his teacher, because he was the first person to talk to him without leaking his pants, and also who didn't make him nervous. After that, Heine asked Kai to go to the classroom in 30 minutes. He found Kai to be a friendly person, and was mistaken in thinking that Kai was the most troublesome. In the end, he decided not to believe the rumors anymore, but would contact the royal family to find out more about each of them. That afternoon, Heine finished the assessment, and there were only 10 minutes left until the meeting. Bruno was walking to class when he accidentally bumped into Leonard. Leo looked at his older brother, who was still protesting in the morning. But now, he had changed, making Leo even more unable to accept the fact and run away. Bruno arrived at the classroom first, and Licht arrived shortly after. Upon seeing that Licht continued to respect Heine, Bruno was very dissatisfied. Kai arrived and saw his two younger brothers arguing. He came to mediate. In fact, both of them are not afraid of Kai, but Kai is too pure, neither of them can argue with him. Only Leo hadn't arrived yet, but Bruno wanted to leave him alone. However, Heine would only start the class when everyone was present. Bruno was about to run to look for him, when he saw Leo already sitting outside the door. Leo thought Heine would fail, but everyone was here, and Heine gave their test back. Bruno obviously received a perfect score. Kai got 87 points, Licht was a little careless with simple sentences, which is why he only got 60 points. Only Leo only got 1 point. Everyone thinks there must be a problem here, but in fact there is no problem at all. Leo got everything wrong, and only got the point for spelling his name correctly. He was very embarrassed, but Kai encouraged him because Leo was good at sports. Because of his bad grade, Leo felt embarrassed in front of everyone and ran away. Bruno revealed that Leo hated studying when he was a child, and Leo's first tutor was very strict and put a lot of pressure on him. This made him hate both studies and tutors. Heine decides to change Leo, because a guardian's duty is not to leave a scar on the student child. Yes, teaching. Heine jumped from the third floor and caught up with Leo on horseback. He tried to stop Leo, but the guy refused, he ran, and pushed him down. Our protagonist told Leo not to be embarrassed by that result, as he had no intention of punishing him. In fact, even if his score is terrible, his duty as a tutor is to change it. He thinks Leo has his own good sides. He will help Leo improve in the things he is weakest at. The same goes for the other three princes. He will teach them what is necessary to prepare for the throne. Heine believes that a person who can admit their own weaknesses like Leo will be able to understand others. After hearing this, Leo grabbed one of Heine's fingers and accepted him as the royal guardian. That day, Heine wanted to teach the four princes about common life. He took them to the city. Leo wanted to know why they had to learn this. Heine gave the example of a princess who did not care about commoners, but who indulged in debauchery, and she was overthrown and beheaded by the people. Leo was scared when he heard this and wanted to learn about the lives of civilians. Heine wanted the four of them to disguise themselves so they wouldn't be recognized by people. Licht was the one who came up with the idea and sent them the costumes. When they were walking around, they were confused because they always got lost, and Heine took them to visit the city's main tourist attractions. Then he took them to the shopping street and told them to buy whatever they wanted. Bruno went to buy books and Kai also wanted to buy something. Only Leo didn't know how to shop. Heine and Licht immediately took him to the general store to teach him how to shop. Leo decided to buy a doll, but he didn't know how to pay for it. Heine showed him a way to convert coin denominations. Leo still didn't quite understand. He gave all the silver coins to the shopkeeper. He took out a silver coin and gave the change back to Leo. Leo was excited, as he had successfully gone shopping alone for the first time. Licht and Leo walk away, because they still have work to do with each other. Afterwards, Heine went shopping for books with Bruno. Bruno was dissatisfied with all the books in the store, but due to his limited budget, he could only choose one. After that, the two went looking for Kai and found him in the park feeding the pigeons. Licht felt a little hungry and invited the group to eat hot dogs. And in this scene, we see that Leo and Bruno don't know how to eat without a spoon and knife. But the king showed them how to eat a hot dog properly, which is starting with the sausage and stuffing it into their little mouths. Bruno found this way of eating a little difficult, but Licht and Kai adapted very easily. In the afternoon, when they were about to return to the palace, a thief stole an old woman's purse. Leo tried to chase the robber, but Kai didn't stop him, because he had already taken the woman's bag back. It turns out that Heine allowed Kai to act while things were getting complicated. The elderly woman thanked Kai and gave him a bag of sweets. She also gave it to Leo because he stood up to help a stranger like her. Two soldiers arrived to take Heine and the princes back 
to the palace. And Heine asked the princes what impressed them most about this trip. They said they were amazed by what they experienced. Heine told them all that people's smile is the most important thing. Although there were a few more people, the police acted very quickly to help solve the problem. This town used to be very poor, but ever since your father Victor became king, he brought peace to this town and the two people smiled like that. Our protagonist wanted them to strive to become an even better king than their father. Now the princes are determined to become kings with their own desires. Victor was the youngest king when he ascended the throne at 18 years of age. For his exceptional talent, he was called the god of war. That night, a servant came looking for Heine, saying that King Victor had returned. I really wanted to meet Heine. The next morning, Heine arrived and saw that the four princes were also here. Serbo called the five to come in and meet the king. King Victor was happy to see his sons again. But now, it's the time when Victor wants to argue like a king. He took a quick look at the prince's tests. For Kai and Bruno, he has nothing to say. Regarding Licht, Victor knew the boy understood. He did it carelessly and only got 60 points. But Leo is the most problematic case. If he continues like this, he will have no right to miss the throne. Victor, he gave three days to prepare for a new test. This time, he needs to score 60 points or his right to the throne will be revoked. Bruno thinks this is too harsh on Leo, but it's necessary. After hearing all this, Leo felt pathetic for disappointing his father. But Bruno encouraged his younger brother, telling him to get his head up and start three long days of training. He will help Leo in any way he can. All the other princes agree. Now, Bruno wants to find a way to improve Leo. Lichty consoled Leo, saying that he at least knows when it's one plus one. However, Leo's reaction was quite suspicious. Bruno asked Leo if he knew the answer. Everyone was scared when they heard the answer was three. Bruno didn't believe his brother could be so stupid. He wanted Leo to think again. As a result, he became even more frustrated when Leo replied that it was 11. Heine went there and taught him the most basic way to do a calculation, which is to use your fingers. However, if the answer was greater than 10, Leo wouldn't have enough fingers to count. Heine thought of another way. He ordered a cake divided into six pieces. If we each took one, how many would be left? He asked. Leo easily replied that there would only be one slice left. Using torture as an example ends up making her seem much more relatable. So Heine asked another question. There are 30 slices of pie. If five people take one each, how many slices will be left? Leo immediately replied that there would be a 25 left. A day passed and Leo managed to improve his score to 15. But he will start the test tomorrow. Heine had told the other princes to rest and let him take care of the rest. Leo started to get discouraged because he thought he wouldn't be able to do it and that his father would hate him. But Heine still wanted him to continue and the two studied until morning. The next day, Leo went to talk to Victor to take the test. Everyone watched until time ran out. In the end, Victor let Heine evaluate the test. Leo only got 59 points. This meant that Leo was stripped of his right to inherit the throne. But Victor evaluated the test in king style. He ended up giving Leo an extra point because the guy spelled his name correctly. Thus, the princes were happy that Leo was not stripped of his right to inherit the throne. Victor, observing the way Heine and the princes laughed and talked happily, ended up being very happy that they all managed to get along. That same night, Heine went to Victor to have a few drinks with him. Victor is happy that Heine was able to help Leo improve. But Heine wants Victor to remember their agreement. As long as no one knows about his past, Heine will continue teaching the princes. The next day, Heine went down the street to buy some books and rested in a coffee shop. He was surprised because the boy was drunk. And why did he look like Licht? But the drunk said that Heine could have been mistaken because he is another person. Heine also thought so. He let it go. Licht was scared because Heine showed up here. He was afraid that if he was discovered, he would be hated by his brothers and his father. He decided to attract as little attention as possible. Licht even tried to ask the manager to help him. But the manager didn't accept it because his idea involved ruining the comfort of other customers. This is against the cafeteria rules. Two ticket players from the cafeteria were arguing. They caused a pillar to almost fall on a girl. Luckily Licht caught her and didn't forget to flirt with her. Then he helped two boys understand each other by hitting all the ticket balls into the holes. Heine was impressed with Licht's handling. He left and left a note telling Licht to come to his room after work. At that moment, a count arrived at the cafeteria, under Victor's orders, to take Licht to the palace. Heine was waiting in the classroom when he saw the count taking Licht home. Heine quickly went to Victor's office to talk, and the king heard everything from the count and ended up being disappointed in his son. He thought Licht was indulging in debauchery, but Heine said that Licht was not indulging in debauchery and that he actually took his work seriously. Victor gave his son a chance to explain himself. Licht said that at first he thought it would be a cool game because the waiters attracted the girls, but when he tried, he messed up. However, everyone taught him with great patience and thanks to them. He learned about the work and became very interested in it. He doesn't give up and doesn't care what others say. Licht will continue, but Victor didn't accept it because he was worried about the possibility of Licht's identity being revealed and being put in harm's way. But Licht believes that Victor doesn't love him at all. When he was young, he was sick, but his father never visited him. He thought that because he was the youngest son, there was no possibility of inheriting the throne. Licht believes that his father was just trying to protect the royal family's reputation, and so he never tried to understand. Because of this pile of feelings, Licht became furious and ran to the cafeteria. From now on, he plans to live independently. Victor and Heine chase him, trying to convince him to return, but they are unsuccessful. At this moment, the manager appeared. Victor said,
that he was Lick's father and that he wanted to try to work here to understand his son better. Lick tried to stop him, but Victor's eyes made the manager soften. The manager gave Victor a very masculine work outfit. Victor asked Heine for advice, but he didn't like the stubborn nature of father and son. Lick calmly sat down and composed the solution. Since this was their family problem, it was better for Heine to stay out of it. Victor tried to do the best he could, and his son continued to believe that his father would speak quickly. But no matter what job the manager assigned Victor, he performed very well. A foreigner needed help, and Victor immediately used a foreign language to help him. With his handsome appearance, combined with his extensive knowledge, Victor stands out very well in the cafeteria. The manager also really likes the way Victor works. Licht wondered if Victor was such a perfect father because he didn't care about him before. At the end of the workday, the manager invited Victor to come to work next time, but he refused. Father and son went out to bring the sign inside, and Victor apologized for not understanding Licht's feelings. He let Licht decide his own path. Licht is now determined to continue that work. With this incident, Licht also partially understood why Victor didn't visit. Victor said he visited Licht while he was sleeping because no matter how busy he was, he kept an eye on his precious treasures. After hearing this, Licht was so happy that he started crying. The Count is now watching them from afar. Their goal is to separate Victor and not allow him to have a successor. A few days later, Heine wanted the four princes to discuss a certain topic. For example, if a jewelry company is struggling and needs to borrow money from the state, what will they do? Licht quickly responded that they lent the money, but there it prohibits the state from lending money to a person. Therefore, this idea was rejected. Leo came up with the idea of asking people for help, and each person would spend a little to help. Gradually that would be enough. However, this seems unconvincing, but Victor gets in touch and thinks it's really cool. He wanted to present this to the council. Asked Leo to write a full report. As Leo was being praised a little, Bruno felt a little envious. Since childhood, Bruno admired his father and wanted to become a king like him. Many people believe that his older brother, Enes, is the only one worthy of inheriting the throne. It seemed that Enes was such an extraordinary genius that he didn't even need a doctor. As he wanted to surpass Enes, Bruno dedicated himself to his studies. But now Bruno was feeling jealous of Leo because he was worried that his younger brother could potentially be a genius like Enes. And seeing that Bruno was upset, Enes tried to ask about the matter, but Bruno said it was nothing. Our protagonist discussed the thesis that Bruno needed to present at a university. This thesis is quite difficult, so Bruno wants to listen to our protagonist's advice, and he said that Bruno just repeated his previous presentation without any new ideas. Most importantly, there were many spelling mistakes, the king marked them all. Our protagonist thought that Bruno was worried about something, but Bruno didn't want to say that, the king didn't force him. The only idea that the king didn't even have was to ask Bruno to write a thesis about the changes he wanted for the country. If Bruno doesn't complete this well in two weeks, the king hasn't even promised not to consider him another disciple. With this motivation, Bruno became much more excited. He would sit in his room working diligently on his thesis. If he didn't like it, he would redo it and continue working all night, causing him to often fall asleep on the table. The next morning, Leo delivered this report to his father, while Bruno presented the thesis to the king and looking at Bruno's undeniably bad expression is enough to understand how hard he tried, but the result was beyond the king's expectations. He considered him worthy to be his disciple. With this thesis, he can confidently speak at the university. Bruno arrived at the university and started giving a lecture. He didn't want to disappoint the king. When the presentation ended, Bruno was a little disappointed because he didn't see anyone react. But then everyone applauded loudly and helped Bruno regain confidence in himself. Many people invited Bruno to give a presentation at their school. At that moment, Bruno's third idol, Dr. Dimitri, appeared. He was impressed with the presentation and invited him for a meal. He told Bruno to give up the throne and become a scholar with him. He thought that Bruno would not be able to inherit the throne because his brother was older. He gave Bruno a week to think about it and respond. Bruno was still hesitant because he still wants to become a king like his father. But he accidentally heard Victor. The watch was Leo's report. This made him feel sadder and he also felt a little unable to become a king. Bruno was still hesitating to give an answer when he saw Heine walking the dog. After Heine learned that Bruno was excited about trying to become a king and academic, he told Bruno to choose the thing he most wanted to do at the moment. He would have nothing to regret later. After receiving Heine's advice, Bruno had an answer. He went to the doctor and said that he would become a full university student only when he was more mature, because his biggest dream was to become a king and that dream he would not give up, even if he had the chance or not. The doctor understood his determination and accepted the answer with joy. He's gone. Soon after, Heine appears and is impressed by Bruno's determination, and he already promises to do everything he can to help Bruno become a king. After Con Rosenberg found out that Bruno didn't give up the throne, he became very angry and wanted to eliminate Heine at all costs. He sent someone to look for Heine's information. One night, Kai ran to ask Heine for advice. Bruno and Leonard also came to ask Heine for something, saying that their brothers were all here. Licht also joined, and Heine wants to know about Kai's question. He also didn't hide anything and said that Victor wanted him to improve his communication, but he didn't know what to do. In fact, all four brothers have problems. Licht is very negligent. Bruno still doesn't have much confidence to be king. Leonard has no personality problems, but he has major problems with calculations. 
Kai just has communication problems. He can communicate normally with family members but it is different with employees and guards. For example, when Kai was greeted by the guards, his face showed emotions as if he wanted to hit them. As for the employees, Kai's face seemed to be very dissatisfied with what they were doing. Even if Kai didn't say those things, others could easily misinterpret that face of his. Because of this, Kai was afraid that people would avoid him, so he didn't know what to say. The next morning, Haina planned to take Kai to practice communication. The remaining three brothers took him to Delhi, and the girl said she wanted the zoo. Haina thinks this idea is good. The first thing Kai needs to practice is smiling. When everyone arrived at the zoo, Haina wanted Kai to smile and see an animal he liked. But when the guy smiled, he looked even more dangerous. Then the group went to see ostriches and bears. Leo thought the bears would be cute, just like stuffed animals. But in fact, they were the opposite. Delhi was scared. Kai consoled his sister and went with everyone to feed the animals. Everyone is surrounded by animals. Except Bruno and Haina. Kai was lying among the sheep. Our protagonist is Kai who will ask for more action. The team that is there. Kai was sweating as he approached the team. He couldn't say a word. But when he heard Delhi crying in pain after being bitten by a rabbit. Kai returned with everyone. Now, Haina wants Kai to try to communicate with people nearby, like the palace employees. Lick taught Kai some words he used to flirt with girls, which Haina thought was pretty good. Kai came to talk to two maids and said a few words confidently. But she was still a little scared and ran away. A girl walked by carrying something a little heavy. Kai came to help. He later helped many other people in the palace and was misunderstood by the soldiers. Because of this, Kai thought that was enough, as he didn't want to scare anyone else. He went away to the grass as always to rest. Then, the maid came to cover Kai with a blanket and gave him tea. As she was scared, she ran away again. Our protagonist approached and told Kai to try to greet and thank the others. It's polite and maybe there are some people who understand it. After that, Kai returned to the room. The maid came to change the sheets on the bed. Kai shyly thanked her for always helping him, and the maid felt happy and stopped fearing Kai. After that, Kai ran to find Heine and his three brothers to share his joy with them. A few days later, Victor called Heine Kai. Bruno is also here. A year ago, Bruno and Kai were studying at a military school when something happened. They threatened teachers to get maximum grades without taking the tests. Anyone who resisted was beaten. But this nightmare ended when it was discovered that Kai left a student injured. The journalist who wrote this subject was hidden by the authorities. The two princes were suspended from school, while the injured student was expelled due to pressure from authorities. Bruno says that's not true, but Victor can't do anything because that's freedom of expression. Everyone can say what they want, including creating narratives. Heine wanted to hear Kai tell everything. The story began to unfold. When they were both studying at military school, Kai's expression was always frightening. That's why no one approached him. He discovered that Bruno had a lot of bruises on his body, but Bruno said he had injured himself while fencing. But one time, Kai was waiting for Bruno for a long time. He went in to look and saw Bruno being beaten by a student called Foot. Kai couldn't contain his anger. He sprung into action and beat the Foot until he looked dead. After this incident, Kai was suspended and Foot was also expelled. Bruno also dropped out of school because the school didn't accept Kai. Victor sent a complaint to the journalist and was awaiting his response. Heine also saw an article about a criminal who smuggled himself into the palace. And after thinking about this whole subject for a while, Kai wants to talk to Foot to ask him a question. Now, our protagonist is for Kai to promise that, regardless of the outcome, he will not be able to use violence. Kai agrees with Heine. Now, even all the servants said that they believe in Kai's truth. Kai smiled and thanked them. Bruno explains to them that this was the best smile Kai has ever given in his life. After that, Kai and Heine and a soldier arrive at Foot's house. Foot agreed to talk to Kai and invited the three of them inside. He said the reason he hit Bruno was because of rumors that members of the royal family could do whatever they wanted. He saw that Bruno always got the hang of highs. The teacher only focused on teaching Bruno and Kai. He ended up neglecting the other students, making Foot jealous and hitting Bruno to vent his anger. Foot wanted to apologize, but when Kai was about to shake hands to make peace, he pulled out a gun and pointed it at Kai. His men also came out and arrested everyone. Heine, Kai, and the soldier were thrown into the basement and tied up. Foot plans to use the three for blackmail. All this because he was expelled from his school and was also expelled by his family. The worst of all is that when he went to take a photo of them, the three of them were playing. He tried to threaten them so that they would be afraid. When threatening Kai, his expression remained normal. And when the Foot turned to threaten Heine, Kai lost his patience and broke the chain. But Kai remembered his promise to Heine. Foot turned to attack Kai, but Heine removed his chains and trapped him. Just then, the Foot subordinates arrived. Heine asked the soldier to protect Kai. Soon after, he proved himself to be a perfect person, both in knowledge and martial arts. He single-handedly defeated all of Foot's subordinates. After that, Heine handed Foot over to the soldiers. However, the Kai still invited Foot to the palace to become a guard. All this because he wanted to give Foot a second chance. This time, now, they became a guard. He now has his chance to make things right. He knew very well how to take advantage of it, expressing his gratitude to Kai. A few days later, we discovered that the bad rumors about the princes must be brought forward. Heine accidentally found Rosenberg's phone at the entrance. Rosenberg said he wanted to talk to Heine a little. Heine refused, but Rosenberg took him to the carriage and promised to take him back to the palace. Rosenberg said the princes have changed positively since Heine's arrival. Our protagonist already knows that this guy is the person behind everything. A horrible person. However,
However, Rosenberg denies everything and focuses only on the criminal who entered the palace. When the carriage was close to the palace, Heine got out and met Leo. However, Rosenberg said out loud that he discovered who Heine really is. They say he discovered that Heine taught children in a church before becoming a tutor at the palace. Upon hearing this, Heine remained calm. He told Leo to come in with him. Leo was curious and wanted to know more about Heine's past. Asked him. Heine said he had been a volunteer tutor for a long time. The local children thanked him with a meal a day every work day. After that, Leo handed over the homework he had done to Heine. Seeing that Leo no longer hated studying, Heine was very happy because the boy had grown up. After that, Heine went to see Bruno and found him teaching some children. The children wanted to know more about Bruno, like what he did and whether he had a girlfriend or not. Bruno does not want to reveal his private life, disappointing the children. Heine said that if he cannot lead a few children, how can he hope to lead millions of subjects like the king? Bruno accepted Heine's advice and opened up to the children. Then, Heine went to talk to Kai. Kai said he wanted to go back to military school, but he didn't dare tell his father because he knew the guy wouldn't accept it. Our protagonist advised Kai to convince Victor himself instead of asking others. Because that is the necessary courage he must have to become a king. After that, Heine went to the coffee shop to find Licht. He realized that thanks to this work, Licht had a better understanding of the social situation. Heine wants him to continue on the path he believes is true. In Licht's view, it looked like Heine was saying goodbye. The next morning, the four brothers met to discuss Heine's past. Based on what Leo heard from Rosenberg, they still didn't know much. They decided to sneak into Heine's room. At that moment, Heine arrived and invited them into his room. They were surprised when they saw that Heine's room was very messy. The reason behind all this was because Heine couldn't clean his own room because he was busy preparing a lecture for them. They decided to help Heine clean his room. Bruno created a plan for the best cleaning. Heine said he didn't want them touching his private box while they were cleaning it. This made them think that it was something that contained Heine's secrets. Leo asked Heine to scratch his back so that Licht would have a chance to open this box. But before Licht could touch, Heine realized his actions. Insisting on this, Leo asked Heine to get him a cake. But Heine wanted them to leave them alone to work. However, even so, Leo sneaked in and opened the box, ignoring Heine. Inside that box were the things they and the church students had given to Heine. Children loved our protagonist and wanted to become someone like him. At this moment, Heine states that all students are precious to him, including princes. And to punish them for being curious, Heine gave everyone homework. So, they all continued to clean Heine's room until evening. The princes also discovered that the king still has a newspaper about a criminal who entered the palace. The princes thought this was fake news, as criminals cannot hide in a place with so many guards. But Heine said that it's not good to assume things, and that the best thing is to confirm everything for yourself. If that criminal was him? Upon hearing this, the princes laughed because they were sure that Heine was not a criminal. He told the princes that if they heard rumors of a criminal inside the palace, would you laugh about it? No, they can't laugh. After all, the criminal may be warning his successor. If one of them becomes king, a single error in judgment can cause you to lose the entire country, and Heine would like them to check the speed of the matter and make a judgment for themselves as candidates for the throne. That's today's lesson. Kai wants to find the person who wrote this newspaper, but the author's name is not written in the newspaper. He knows the person who edited the article and therefore will speak to him. However, this writer resigned after writing that article. The four brothers went looking for this man, but found no information. At the end of the day, Lid came back and said that he had investigated that the man who changed his name several times appeared at the city hall several times. They went to the city hall and caught a man as he was about to leave. They threatened him, causing him to panic. The man confessed that he was paid by a mysterious man to write this article, and the mysterious man asked him to write an article about the events leading up to King Victor. Before he ascended the throne, they consulted the list of criminals from that time and saw Heine's name. Heine was arrested on charges of kidnapping and murdering Victor. They sat down together to discuss and concluded that Heine was definitely a criminal, because they certainly wouldn't face any danger if the criminal really was Heine. They immediately went looking for Heine, but did not find him. They went to meet Victor, and Victor said that in the past he used to sneak out of the palace to observe people's lives, and on one occasion when he was out of the house, his watch was stolen. Victor was chasing the thief when he met Heine. Heine told the two boys to give Victor the watch back. He wanted Victor to go home, but Victor followed Heine to where the orphans were. Heine, who is responsible for leading this group, strictly forbids them from committing crimes. They saw that Victor was hungry, they led a mass, but he only took one bite and then handed it to the girl nearby. In the following days, Victor constantly fled the palace to help Heine. He showed Heine how to earn money to take care of the children, and upon witnessing this reality, Victor promised himself that he would change this country when he became king. Little by little, Heine becomes Victor's only friend, and the only person he can open up to. The harvest festival was coming, Victor gave Heine his gold watch so that Heine could have money to take care of the children. The guards discovered that Victor was missing and thought he had been kidnapped. The army went looking for him. Heine and Victor were discovered and pursued by soldiers. Victor's watch fell out of Heine's hands, causing the soldiers to think that Heine had kidnapped Victor. They drew their guns and shot Heine, but Victor stood up to protect Heine, injuring himself in the process. The soldiers did not want to take responsibility, they blamed Heine for Victor's murder. Heine was furious and attacked them, but Victor told him to stop. Heine was arrested 
arrested and imprisoned and while in prison Heine always prayed for Victor and after Victor recovered from his injuries he went to see Heine. Obviously Victor explained everything to the king and for that our protagonist was forgiven. A year later Victor became king and built a church so the king could teach children. From an illiterate orphan Heine became the respected teacher he is today. Victor and Heine decided not to announce this to avoid controversy. If the truth is announced Heine will leave the palace. Tomorrow will be the prince's last class and Heine's last day as a teacher here. That night the four princes couldn't sleep and the next morning they went to see Heine. Heine heard the statement that Victor had told everyone about the misunderstanding but Heine wanted them to think like kings and ignore the emotional issues. If a criminal sneaked into the palace what would they do? Licht answered honestly that he would expel the criminal and Heine's original goal was to come here to train them so that they would become kings. And a king cannot make decisions with his emotions overwhelmed. He has the strength to see his own weaknesses and overcome them. Furthermore, he has a more powerful imagination than anyone else. If he becomes king, he can save the kingdom from danger with his strength and imagination. Next up is Licht. He claims to be a playboy, but he is very serious. He is humble, treats everything equally and knows how to listen to your stories. If he becomes a king, create a kind kingdom that will reach out to anyone without discrimination. Also for Bruno, he has a lot of knowledge. He never neglected his efforts to study. You can transmit knowledge to others and have the ability to judge and make good decisions. If he becomes a king, he will be able to lead this kingdom properly. The end for Kai, he has a selfless heart and strength to overcome adversity. If he becomes a king, he will be able to protect peace for all people. Now the last lesson is over. That night, the king officially left the palace. At night, Victor went to see the four children and noticed that everyone was unhappy. They said a new tutor chosen by Rosenberg's calm was arriving. Victor just hoped that the four children would get along with their new guardian, but they don't accept anyone. Since the council has not yet decided on a teacher, the four princes want to give their opinion to the council to prove that Heine is the perfect person for this role. Because the royal tutor must be the person who gives advice to help the princes grow to the point where they are able to take the throne. The princes intend to prove how mature they have become to convince the council. Together, they prepare a presentation to convince the board. Victor feels very happy that his children are trying so hard. Heine had returned to the church and Victor went to greet him to say that there was a meeting to choose a new guardian that afternoon and that the four princes were planning something. He said, if you want, you can come and see. At this meeting, the Rosenberg recommended a tutor with whom the council seemed very pleased, but the four princes arrived and objected. The four princes want Heine to return as royal tutor, but Rosenberg exposed Heine's past in front of everyone, saying that he was a criminal and had no education or qualifications. But the princes argued that everyone had made mistakes in the past. At this moment, they are thinking of themselves as the future king and not as children. They didn't want to make a wrong decision that would affect the country. They used the last lesson Heine taught to declare the goal they wanted to achieve when they became kings. Thanks to Heine, they realized these valuable things. Their speech was praised by the crown prince. Heine was also very emotional. Upon leaving the room, Victor met Heine and Rosenberg again. Heine was surprised that his younger brothers had grown significantly. It was voting time. Victor returned to the lounge. Heine, on the other hand, terminally forbade Rosenberg to interfere further in this matter because he wanted to compete fairly with his younger brothers. What was best for them was what was best for him. The next day, the royal tutor arrived. The four princes were very happy that Heine had returned.